What? Yes, and that right? actually football intersected with politics over Did the it? weekend. Oh, here's our segue. So down, the rivalry, a college football rivalry, was injected with even more bitterness over the weekend when the two front runners for the 2024 Republican presidential nomination both showed up at the game. On Saturday, both former President Donald Trump and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis attended the contest between Iowa and Iowa State. Trump sat in a private suite and was greeted with cheers, but also notably some boos and insulting gestures when he at one point waved to the crowd. Well, they waved back, but not the way he would have wanted them to uh, wave not, back. Yeah, no, we won't. We no, won't, don't show we won't go into detail. No. Uh, DeSantis, meanwhile, sat in the stands with Iowa's Republican Governor Kim Reynolds, who he said... Uh, would consider for vice president if he wins the nomination. Both candidates also tried to win over Iowans outside the stadium, tailgating with fans before the game. So there you go. Donald Trump took to truth social Boy, to voice he was, his frustration. He was angry. Angry, yeah, not angry about the, old man. Yeah, no. It was about a recent poll that asked yeah. voters about what he called his age and mentality. The former president wrote in a phony, probably rigged Wall Street Journal poll coming out of nowhere to soften the mental incompetence blow that is so obvious with crooked Joe Biden. They ask about my age and mentality. Where did that come from? Well, a few I years mean, ago, we could we could play you about a, uh, an hour worth of clips to show you where not it came have from. Enough time. Show you trying to walk down the stage at West Point. I, I digress. I continue. A few years ago, I was the only one to agree to a mental acuity Dude, test. Dude, you said horse, cow, woman, pig, camera, or something. And, and the aced fact it. That you had, the fact that you call that acing it shows just how wobbly things must be for you. And then he added, now that the globalists at Fox oh. and the Wall Street Journal have failed to push their third the tier Fox candidate to success, now. they do this. Well, I hereby challenge Rupert Murdoch and Sons, Biden, Wall Street Journal heads to acuity tests. That, wouldn't, that would not work out well for Donald Trump on so many levels. Rev, I'm so glad. Wow. I'm so glad that, that, that this uh, Alex put this angry, put this here because two things. First of all, I want you to talk about how unmoored uh, Donald Trump is, um, continues to be, and now calling Rupert Murdoch and Fox News globalists. Uh, but secondly, um, I, I went to all these links last night that said Joe Biden crazy as hell, looks like him low howling at them. Joe Biden sleepy, Joe, Joe this, Joe that. It's Vietnam. You know, I figured he was going to be tired in Vietnam. That's not a shock. I said before he left, India, Vietnam, I'm not so sure. So I looked at it and, you know, at this point, they're just making ass up. They're just making stuff up. You know, he's tired. And then he goes, I go into bed. I, it, it, again, it's like now, no matter what the guy does, they're going to have these screaming headlines saying that he's out of it and crazy when it's just the opposite. And then you got, I mean, it, then, then you got, yeah, then you got Donald Trump howling at the moon saying crazy stuff every day. It's like, I don't know. I talked to a lot of people uh, over the past week or so. They don't, they don't, they're not thrilled about either side, but it's not like they're going Biden's crazy and Trump is all there. It's just kind of the opposite. It is exactly the opposite. The advantage that Trump has is when you start off a little strange, it's harder to gauge that you've gotten stranger. I mean, we, we, we look at Biden, who has started off normal and starts saying, is he acting off? Uh, Trump started off, so it's harder for people to catch up with how off he's really gotten because he was never really that stable and, and, and centered in the first place as we would judge being stable and centered. And then for him now to uh, just pick fights with people that really helped to create his candidacy in 16, Wall Street Journal, Fox News. I mean, it, it, it's like a child, which also gives you concerns about is he losing his balance? 
even more than uh, he already was off balance. Uh, it's like a child. Anybody that says anything, he, it just is a, 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 a in, incites him to start playing childish games and and goes off. I think that we have yeah. concern. Uh, if I were in the Republican Party, I'd, I'd be concerned about uh, Donald Trump, not because of his age, but because of where his his mind has always been. It's all about him, only about yeah. him, and he can't help himself. You know, and re really quickly, we, w we want to get, we got Chuck Rosenberg here, want to go to Chuck and talk about a lot of things that are happening in the court cases. I do want to, though, to talk first, Jonathan Lemire, about the fact that we, we're all talking about next year, 2024, and, uh, you know, a lot of hand-wringing, as James Carville said, a lot of bedwetting on his plastic uh, bed sheets. <laughs> okay. uh, but but you, you have a Republican Party that really is, it's just split. It's splintered, yes, 50% of Republicans support Donald Trump, great. That's 50% that don't. And then you've got this war with Fox News. I mean, you know, I talked to somebody this weekend, again, a, a, a supporter of Trump, and we were talking, and I said, oh, you, you, you know, then they let me know. They watch Newsmax. That's where they get all their news. It's now news. But there's just these splinters and divisions. And we have a guy who wants to be the Republican nominee who is trashing Fox News every day. Again, Fox News, they'll get by. You know, other people will get by. But I'm just saying, when you have a Republican Party that is that splintered, Donald Trump d dividing it right down the middle, it doesn't bode well for next year. I don't care what everybody says. Yeah, Trump is making the bet that he's bigger than Fox, that he doesn't need Fox. And that's a risky bet to make. We know what power they have wielded for such a long time. And it's true. They were supportive, eventually, of Trump in 2016. They were all in on 2020. And they've kind of gone back and forth here. Like, he has, they certainly seem to be flirting with the candidacy of Ron DeSantis for a while, as that has stalled. Frank, looking at their coverage, analysts say like it's pretty. It's warmed up to Trump again for the most part, but, the, but that's not good enough for Trump. Trump wants simply almost a Kim Jong-un-esque chorus of just nothing but support at all times. So therefore, if there's any even slightly dissenting voice, and he singles out in these posts a, a particular piece in the Wall Street Journal, the occasional anchor in Fox News, if they're not just giving him lavish praise at all times, that's not good enough, and he goes scorched earth against them. And, and to your point, that's that's dangerous a little bit here, as he is far ahead in the primaries, and even a fractured Republican Party seems at this moment on track to renominate him. But as we go into next year, he can't afford to lose any support. We know how close next year's election is going to be. We talk often about how President Biden can't afford to lose these small margins, whether it's because of voters of color or those who might be attracted to a more liberal third party candidate. But that applies to Trump, too. Trump doesn't have a margin of error either. He would need every single vote he can. And if he's turning off some Republicans, if he doesn't get that full throated endorsement of Fox News next time around, that could, to your point, Joe, absolutely come back and hurt. We're